boy. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of our Glacier Ridge. That sounds so weird to say right now. Glacier Ridge? Is that how you say it? Glacier Ridge? Yeah, that's how you say it. That is our campaign. I know, but it's just... When I said glacier, it, it sounded weird to me. Only sounded weird to you. Okay. Well, anyway, welcome back to our Glacier Ridge campaign. Um, this is a Monster of the Week uh, game. Um, I apologize, as I do every game that it's listed as Dungeons and Dragons on Twitch. Um, but we don't have access to any other options for a tabletop RPG, so sucks to be uh, if i can interrupt for a second there's no music in stream there's no music in stream what about you guys are you are you sure there's no music because uh, it's showing up on my thing i'll go back and listen keep going uh it's just it might be quiet um is it is it there pretty sure it's there uh anyway um so, Glacier Ridge is a fictional town located in the Northwest Territories of Canada. Um, it's located about two hours away from the um, Nahani, uh, Nahani Valley National Park, also known as the Valley of the Headless Men, um, because of some stuff that happened there way back when. Nahani Valley is actually real. Um, Glacier Ridge is not. Um, but yeah, this is our game. Monster of the Week is a game made by Michael Sands, I think. Um, he made a game that is based on your favorite Monster of the Week TV series. Uh, Supernatural, X-Files, uh, Dresden Files, Scooby-Doo, Doctor Who, all of those ones where they fight a monster every single week and come up with a new one every time. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so this one is our campaign where we are based in this town. Our adventuring party is a group of paranormal investigators that are running a TV series or internet TV series known as anybody? The search. There you go. The search. Um, nice. It's, that's probably how it gets announced every time too it's when the the intro comes on it just the search um anyway so this game is our 10th episode uh we're in double digits um double digits yes I haven't been cancelled yet but I think it's just because we haven't really been discovered yet um, <laughs> The moment we're discovered. <laughs> it's all over for <laughs> us. <laughs> um, so yeah, last week we had some fun stuff happen. A lot, a lot of fun stuff. Relatively fun stuff. Arguably uh, fun. Fun to the monster. Yeah. That's rude. Nobody else had fun? Traumatizing stuff. Nobody else had fun? Um... Pretty, and I, have fun pretty with sure. the game. I don't know if I have fun with the trauma. Pretty sure Mark and Tom and Jake didn't have fun. No, they had they had a great time. Uh, so let's start from the beginning, if I can recall correctly. Um, so Emily and Wyatt were hanging out in the room. Charlie was posted outside of the room. And that's where Charlie stayed the entire time because he wasn't at the game. Um, I was very dedicated to my position. Even going on. Yeah, he had no idea yeah. anything was happening. Um, I mean, how was guard. supposed to know that two kids were gonna sneak out of their room? Exactly. They just turned the they just turned the sound up loud. Yeah. Uh, so Emily and Wyatt ended up sneaking off to the cave. Um, I believe that uh, I'm trying to remember what everybody else was doing. Um, I met up with Maxine and Victor at the bar. 
because I had a message waiting for me. Right. Yeah, you guys were all going to the bar to hang out. Uh, you started talking to random people at the bar. Um, and I talked to Goggles. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. That well, that was his name. You're right. Um, it's Zeke, but he's goggles. Yes. Let me uh, let me just check something real quick here. So, uh, yeah, you guys were kind of talking about how you were going to proceed. Victor and Maxine went to the bar. Uh, Wyatt was showing Emily the jail cell footage, and then they decided to go to the cave. You guys all were checking out who was in the bar. Um, some of the patrons included a couple of people who were in suits or one person who was in a suit and then another guy showed up later um there was the guy with the goggles of course um you yeah you brought a beer to his name was ezekiel but goggles uh maxine went to go talk to aria about finn um because finn is a interesting topic um and <laughs> Frankie learned about forest Wi-Fi. Um It's gonna be the next big thing, you guys. Yeah. Uh, uh Ezekiel Ezekiel asked her to and uh them to invest ten thousand dollars, I think. <laughs> um then forest Wi-Fi. <laughs> you just expected me to pull it out of my pocket. Yeah. Like I don't need to carry ten grand in my pocket. Uh and then, yeah, Wyatt and Emily snuck off to the caves. Um, fog was coming out of the cave while they went there. Um, and then Wyatt had a vision um, of... I'm trying to remember. Oh, Wyatt had asked the monster in the in the fog how to help and why it had a vision of a hand reaching out and touching the uh altar uh then shadow people appeared out of the fog and grabbed wyatt wyatt stayed calm and still tried talking to the monster and the monster got a disappointed look on her face and then everything disappeared uh Victor, Frankie, and Maxine, we went back to them and they started talking about the different things they had discovered, including um, that the two suited gentlemen were Albatross. Eduardo and Mateo. Yes. Um, and then the pub door slammed open. Um, that was... I think that was mark yeah yeah because jake was in the bar jake was the one in the bar and mark slammed the door open and was like you gotta come quick you gotta come quick and you they all took yeah someone took tom and they ran out of the bar uh jake and mark uh victor following right after and then followed by maxine and frankie uh when they got to the forest where mark and um what's his name Jake were running. Um, they heard a blood curdling scream and saw four shadow people, each gripping a limb of Tom and pulled him apart. Uh, and off in the distance behind, there was the monster and got a big smile and disappeared. Uh, immediately, Frankie left and had a spring in their step as they were heading towards the cave instantly after this. It was a spring in my step, but... You were, you were booking it according to, like, you went quick. Uh... Well, yeah, I mean, there was a lot going on. You gotta move fast. As they were going to uh the cave they ran into wyatt and emily where they had a little encounter did. 
of yeah basically getting busted and uh they told wyatt to take emily back to the lodge now uh then frankie they're like if anyone's gonna bust you they're the one you want to bust you <laughs> exactly yeah it would be awful if you had one of the others uh anyway so uh then frankie arrived at the cave uh fog started oh while they were at the cave they slowly but surely creeped into the cave until they got to the big round room or oval room i can't remember what it actually is um and saw a tally mark of in blood on the wall uh oh, that's normal yes um they started talking to themselves a lot saying why couldn't you just carve it into the wall why are you using blood um okay, sometimes you need is, an expert opinion is it because they uh messed with you uh what's the reasoning behind this and then they started getting surrounded by fog um shadow people then attacked frankie slammed them up against the wall um and then the shadow monster appeared uh frankie again remained pretty chill and the monster looked upset and disappeared i mean my head was kind of throbbing like i'm not there's only so much you can do when you're like dazed and confused that's fair uh wyatt and emily got back to the lodge um victor and maxine called the sheriff uh, Victor Wyatt and the sheriff decided to investigate the murder scene while Maxine stayed back and interviewed the uh, people like the Wait. hunters uh, Victor and Wyatt interviewed the sheriff uh, Maxine interviewed the hunters asking them what they did they said all they did was set up their blinds and then this just happened while they were setting up their blinds uh victor and wyatt talking to the sheriff was kind of saying it's like do you see any any signs of monster or animal attack sheriff said no then they went back and discussed what happened um that was i think the next morning talking about what happened no it was that night because they came back to the lodge and they found frankie with like a bag of ice on their head okay yeah and they were still bleeding and they were like what the fuck happened to you um uh, I, think, then... I, think, I think frankie and victor or not victor yeah i yeah, think they frankie would go victor the next day though i was pretty sure i had a concussion uh well the the next day evelyn gave you guys a message from the sheriff uh so right. you guys um decided to go to the sheriff's office right after that wyatt went to go talk to finn uh finn told him that there's more monsters out there basically um told finn not to go out uh to not be afraid if uh he sees the monster blah 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 um frankie and victor went to the sheriff's station where silas went over his coroner's report coroner's report um, basically explaining what had happened and that he'd never seen this before. Then, turns out, the sheriff is a pretty cool guy. Um, he gave you some info, told you that this isn't the first time it's happened, and you guys gotta be chill about things, and things will go well. Um... Maxine then went to her appointment with Hazel, where she set up a... T we didn't set up a time, but I'm going to say um, we'll go on the weekend, I guess. Um, but set up a time to go to the Whispering Pines Trail. Uh, the party then gathered again to discuss the new findings. And then while they were talking about what the sheriff gave them and stuff... Emily bursts through the door and Emily is scared out of her mind and immediately runs saying, you guys got to follow me. Another one, another one. Uh, Frankie tries talking to her while she's running and makes fun of the fact that she can't talk while she's running. Uh, <laughs> um, what are you saying? 
Uh, and you guys go to the woods where the incident happened. The blood of Tom is still on the ground and you look up in the trees and where the hunting blinds were are two more bodies. The body of Jake and the body of Mark. Both flayed open with their entrails hanging down towards the ground. And that's where we ended the game. I apologize that this has taken 15 minutes to go through, but last game was very long. So, hopefully... And I am happily sitting outside the door. Still standing outside the door. <laughs> uh, uh, speaking of which, at this time as well... No, the kids are already out because this is one more thing. Uh, because we don't have a Wyatt tonight, at this time, uh, Frankie actually turned to Wyatt and said, Get Emily out of here now. Uh, which then we're going to say Wyatt does. So that's where Wyatt and Emily are for this game. Wyatt listens for once. For the first time, Wyatt is going to listen because I'm not going to play Wyatt. I feel like we can also assume once he gets back, I would be informed of what's going on. Well, you would have just been outside his room and that night. Yeah, that night. This but is the next like, day. Emily uh, came out of the room okay. and like went to bed and stuff. So you would have gone to bed. I understand. And then you would have found out that he snuck out. Yes. All right. And he is now grounded. <laughs> All right. So, uh, what are we doing? We have Frankie, uh, Victor, and Maxine. And I'm going to go ahead and guess Charlie as well, standing in the woods and staring at these bodies up in the trees. Perfect time for the music to stop. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, this is like escalating craziness. I we just saw these guys last night. It's what I just. I, uh, yeah. I just I don't I don't understand. I don't get why the monster all of a sudden is like killing. No, Frankie, you talked to her last night. Uh, well, she also smashed you against the wall, but it's like, I, yeah, what is, why is, why is this happening? Victor, I think the sheriff was right. And I think this is my fault. What do you mean? She tried to scare Wyatt. Wyatt wasn't scared. Tom shows up dead. I go to try and talk to her. She tries to scare me. I'm too dazed to show fear because I got my head slammed into a wall and now two more people show up dead. So she kills if she doesn't scare? If she isn't feeding off of enough fear from scaring people? She's going to feed off plenty of it if she murders someone. But there's only way I can be sure if this is... If my theory is right. I don't want to, I don't want to uh, test that I theory. Say, I don't think we should test that theory. I don't want anybody else dead. It, it would Tom make sense. It. It would make sense. Because, Where uh, did you see this tally? in that cave where she took Charlie that first time. We were trying to figure out why it seemed she was just running around trying to scare people, but if she feeds off of fear, it makes sense. Um, I'm going to quietly turn around and start... I'm not gonna, like, run, but I'm gonna start walking in the direction of the cave okay. i'm not All right. gonna try or anything but well you're not going alone i'll go with you okay well what are we doing about these guys it's Call like are we yeah you're gonna think... have to get it's not a lot sure. we don't want to touch the bodies or anything we gotta leave it as it is 
No, 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 and we didn't with the other one, but... Call the sheriff. Stay here. Try and make sure no one comes within, like, viewing distance of this. The sheriff's gonna want to keep this as quiet as possible. Okay, so who's going with Frankie? Uh, I am. Okay, so Charlie and I can call the police? Yes. Just tell the sheriff to... If you don't get the sheriff on the line, just tell them to ask the sheriff to meet you at the scene. Hey, you guys be careful. Okay, so... Uh, I'll try, but no promises. Victor and Frankie are heading to the... Uh, cave? Okay. Yes. Okay. So you guys head off on your way. Um, and Maxine and Charlie, you guys are calling the sheriff. Yep. Beep, bop, boop. <laughs> yep, that's how it works. <laughs> that was great. 10 out of 10. Uh, all right. Okay. So, who wants to go first? Well, you guys go. Okay. I guess me and Victor will go first. Okay. Um. So you guys head into the forest. It's daylight, so it's not hard to, or the forest on the other side of town. Um, it's not super hard to do. Um. Uh, so, yeah, head towards the cave. Are you doing the same thing you were doing last night and slowly going in, or what? No, I'm just walking in. Okay. Stop, take a deep breath, and then just kind of head straight in. Okay, so you walk in walk on in and start your way to the back of the cave um i guess not really sure what you're expecting but as you approach the back of the cave once again you see the first tally mark and now there's two more that have been added that's the first time you've seen it right is that what you were talking about yeah. There was one last. So now she's keeping track? Looks that way. <clears throat> there has to be a point to it, because it's... She does it with the blood. There has to be a reasoning behind that. All right, let's get out of here. Um, I don't know if it will help, but while we're in here, um, I want to use, um, while we're in here, I want to use, oops. If I want to stumble across something important, tell the keeper I'll find something important and useful, although not necessarily related to the immediate problems. Okay. Um. Sorry, the music is, it was a little loud coming through, I think. Um, I just turned it down a little bit more. Um, huh. Almost sounds jawsy. Well, while bit. we're in this general vicinity, I guess I should specify not necessarily just the cave. Okay. Um. 
Just trying to think. That's fine. I like putting the keeper on the spot. Yeah, it's super fun when you do that. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it's an ability I have. You should have expected I it know it you. is. Thank you. I'm so happy that you took that one. That was my favorite one that you could have taken. Uh, <laughs> Same. Hey, I'm mundane. I gotta use what I got. No, no, I understand. Okay. Um, so as you are wandering through the forest... Okay. Yeah, we're gonna change this a little bit. It's getting getting too dun, 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 dun. scary. Dun, dun, dun. Gotta make it a little more chill. Not super chill, but a little bit more chill. All right. So as you're wandering through the outskirts, kind of exploring the area around Glacier Ridge, you found the cave. Obviously, no problem. And you're trying to like explore a little bit see if there's anything else in the area um you stumble upon a weathered journal um and as you kind of are looking at it you see that there is a um trying to think of, like embossing I guess is that what it would be called or like engraving well engraving is like In no it'd be embossed yeah either. embossing yeah um okay. you see a name or part of a name um like in embossed on the spine i think is the proper term um it says e blackwood um i'll thumb through it briefly kind of stop walking and thumb through it a little bit okay um so as you're kind of flipping through the pages there's laughing in this song that's interesting sorry um as you're flipping through the pages you actually come across some sketches um that look very similar to what you've seen very recently um Along with that, you come across some, like, scribbled notes detailing, like, different sightings of strange, shadowy figures lurking in the woods, along with uh, some accounts of unexplained disappearances dating back decades. Amidst the entries, uh, there's one passage that catches your eye. Uh, it's an account written by a kind of like you you were kind of like a journalist right like that was your role before yeah yeah so kind of like what somebody like you would have written um, it's like an eyewitness account statements written down uh, by a reclusive woodsman um, who claims to have encountered what E. Blackwood is referring to as the Polar Shadow Stalker. Um, according to the journal, it says that the creature possesses otherworldly powers, able to ma manipulate shadows and darkness with deadly precision. But, as you're looking through it, one other thing uh, that comes across as interesting it's very faded and very hard to read but there is a map tucked away in the back of the journal kind of in like one of those like envelope things that you tie a, 
Just a little string around. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, one of those little pocket looking things. Yeah. Um, its edges are worn and frayed with age. And it has cryptic symbols and ruins on it. And it there's notes taken in the side of it. And those notes are a little bit easier to read. But it hints at a location of a hidden chamber that's deep in the Nahani Valley. Uh, it says that it holds uh, secrets of the Polar Shadow Stalker's true nature. Uh, additionally, uh, some of the later entries in the journal, um, you kind of are starting to get vibes of Elias, um, his entries. Um, try and remember his name now. Uh, nope. This one. Uh, Elias Redwood. You're getting vibes of him. Uh, the whispers grow louder with each passing night. Uh, oh, this one, the location, the date is kind of like jumbled. You can't really make it out. But the location is Glacier Ridge, Nahani Valley National Park. Um, the whispers grow louder with each passing night, their haunting melodies echoing through the darkness like a siren's call. I've seen them, the shadowy figures that stalk the woods, their eyes burning with an otherworldly glow. They are harbingers of chaos and guardians of secret long forgotten. I must uncover the truth no matter the cost. Uh, then the next entry, at last I have found it, the hidden chamber spoken of in the ancient texts. Its walls are etched with strange symbols and glyphs each one pulsing with an ominous energy that sends shivers down my spine. I can feel the presence of the polar shadow stalker lurking in the shadows, its icy tendrils reaching out to ensnare unwary souls. I must tread carefully, for the darkness that dwells within the, this place holds secrets far more sinister than I could have ever imagined. Then, another one, Glacier Ridge Abandoned Cabin. The darkness grows stronger with each passing day, its grip tightening around the heart of Glacier Ridge like a vice. I've heard whispers of disappearances, of souls lost to the shadows that prowl the night. But still, the townsfolk remain blind to the truth, clinging to their illusions of safety and security. They do not see the danger that lurks in the shadows, waiting to claim them as its own. I must continue my search, for the key to stopping the polar shadow stalker lies hidden within these pages, waiting to be uncovered by those brave enough to seek the truth. That's it. Um, I'm gonna just gently tuck the book into my bag. I, I assume you'd be reading that like aloud to me, kind of thing, eh? Um, I I think I w they would have started to, and then like as it got like deeper and deeper, like. I think they may have trailed off a little bit. And just, you know how like when you're reading something out loud and you end up trailing off and you're just kind of, you just keep reading and you don't realize you stopped talking? It'd be kind of like that. Alright, well, we gotta get out of here. Oh, yeah, right. Bring that book and we can and you know what i just realized more in safety i just made another e name <laughs> what so uh e blackwood any relation to e redwood no yeah <laughs> sorry however continue there is something else in town um okay calling the sheriff are you just calling the sheriff's office, or are you calling the sheriff? Do we have... Yeah. Do we have the sheriff's... Did he give a card or anything? Do no. Have a sheriff's the number? number on the front of the building, I guess, would still be in the history on your phone, but that's... 
for emergencies yeah, only guess... type of thing. For or, no, sorry, it was for, it was for after hours emergencies was what that was. But this is during the day, right? Yeah, it's morning time. Okay. So yeah. It's like I'm calling. It's morning time. Um, Good morning. Okay. So you are calling the sheriff's office. Bring bring. Um Hello, Great Glacier Ridge Sheriff's Office. How can I help you? Hey, uh, this is Maxine. We met before. Uh, is the sheriff there? We're looking for the sheriff. Um, yes, mate. It is, it, was he expecting your call? No, no, no. It's an emergency. You've got to get back to where we found the body last night. There's two more bodies. We need the sheriff here now. Okay, we'll be there right away. And they hang up. I'm so glad I'm not there with Maxine right now. Why? What were you going to say? No, because before Victor and I left, I told her, if you don't get the sheriff to answer, just tell them to meet you there. Like, not to, like, put more info out, but Maxine would probably have just put on the door. It's fine. It's not that big of a deal. It's more like a character thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oops. Okay. So Damn it, Maxine. Uh you are waiting there and you start hearing sirens like immediately. Um yeah. and then they show up. Uh and a the girl and the sheriff come running towards you. What was the girl's name again? Olivia. Olivia. Uh, it's it's Victor's favorite. My nemesis. <laughs> His nemesis. Good thing you're in the woods. We're only ten episodes in. How do you already have a nemesis? Because <laughs> annoyed Because he tried telling her you how to do. Why. He tried telling her how to do her job. Which you know. Shocker. As somebody who is just brand new to town, that's a great idea. You've done messed up, eh, Aaron? <laughs> yep. Uh, okay. So, Sheriff books it towards you. Right. All right. Look. Um, look, uh, look. They were in the holding cells. Yeah. I don't know how this happened. No, like, they were just in the holding cells. Like this morning. Yes. This this is crazy. This is crazy. It's like Olivia, go back to the office now, check the footage. And she leaves. They were just being held. Obviously not for any crimes or anything, but they needed protection. Yeah. So were they so, transported out? What, like, what happened? Like, how, like, I don't know. Not that is teleported? what I'm telling you. I do not know. I just, I, okay, yeah. Sorry, I'm just, I can't, it's like, it was bad enough one, and it's like now, we just saw these guys. No, we just saw these guys. That's what I'm saying, right. is they were yeah. here you are, this you morning. Are, I get it, I get it. It doesn't make any sense. So what now? Who? Actually, no, I already know. Frankie. What? Told me that she, they did not give the appropriate reaction as we were discussing the other night. Again. Not placing blame, but yeah, you can't blame this on them. No, of course like, not, because they're not the one doing this. But I think my theory stands. 
uh, right about this time, I would like to uh, radio out to the rest, uh, Maxine and Charlie. Hey, I was right. Looks like the sheriff's right. Well, there you go. The sheriff's here. He just are are you guys close? Are you guys getting back here or what what's happening? We're on our way. Uh, okay. Two more tallies. Uh, well According to the sheriff, they just this is this one's on me. No. No, Frankie, no, it's not. This is on her. And if I had given a reaction that she wanted, two men would still be alive. Okay, we'll discuss this more when we're face to face. But yeah, that's, uh, yeah. You can't be blamed for, oh, it's just so horrific. Where do you want us to meet you? Are we staying? Do we want to stay? I'm guessing the sheriff's going to want us out of here. Do you want us to meet back at the lodge then? Yeah, we'll need to uh, get Silas here again. Okay. Well, we'll we'll meet you back at the at Evelyn's. I assume Coffee. you're talking to. Okay, just making sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking. My mistake. You're not doing. You're not doing. You're not doing a badoop beforehand. Oh, sorry. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so we'll get this Charlie dealt with. and I are going to head off. Um, again, keep this under wraps the best you can. Um, we have to do something soon. Yeah. Can you let us know about the video footage? I assume it's going to be similar to the night before. Well... But, yeah, I think it will help with our investigation. It's like, the more we know, the more we can help. I'll do my best. All right. Thanks, Sheriff. Thank you. So, you so guys... Charlie and I leave? Yep. Yeah. All right, so you guys head back to the lodge? Yeah. I'm shocked that Charlie is mute. I don't know what to say. It's his just fight or flight. Just he goes like, quiet. Just... <laughs> this is old hat is... now, seeing these bodies. Well, Charlie was prior military, wasn't he? Yeah. Not the first time he's seen a body. Nope. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're going to the lodge. Yes. Okay. I assume you're both going there, so just do, 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 yep. do, do. go. I Done. Five hundred miles. Okay, you... so we're going to the conference room? Sure. Wherever you want to meet. Is Watchman Denny there? Sure. Um... I assume you're talking about Tom. Yeah. Yes. I was going to call him Tobias. I was going to call him my best friend Tobias, but I remembered his name was not Tobias. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. Okay. So we inform... Tom. About the bodies? Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess it's a good thing you have security then. Yeah, you think? I'm not sure what else you want me to say. I, this is all part of the job. We 
know this type of stuff is going to happen. According to the sheriff, though, those guys were in the holding cells this morning. He's How supposedly early this checking. Morning? He said just be like just recently. They were going to check the they were going to check the cameras. So are they being I asked him, are they teleporting out? We have no idea. What if this thing is like messing with your mind or something? What if that's got, it's got like these cool powers? What if these people never right. actually existed to begin with? <clears throat> How are these cool powers? They're killing people. What if, I'm saying, what if they're not people? We, we have pictures of how would they not be people? What do you mean the you have pictures of people that were in the tree? The guys that died, do you think they're not, they weren't people? Well, That's a, I, I don't know. We still have the GoPros on picture mode, so we would have pictures of it. Oh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I just, it's crazy to me. I, I have never seen anything like this, ever. I've dealt with some weird stuff, but this is crazy. It's like, we have, we have to help these people. Again, I'm not sure what you want me to do. I can't do anything in this oh. situation. This is out of, you guys are not cops you're not anything this is completely out of your jurisdiction you are here to find the truth and that's all there is to it can you hear me yeah yeah oh i lost sound for a sec no you're good no no i couldn't hear you guys okay well what did you hear up to where i was saying that we got to help these guys okay um this isn't your job. This isn't your jurisdiction. No, I, You're not police no, officers. You I are here that. to find the truth. That's all there is to it. Let the police officers do their job and deal with the dead bodies as they arrive. Because that's all we can do. Okay, well, we, we've got to get to the bottom of this because this is... Yeah. How I many more people are going to die? I understand the need. I'm just saying. If you want to stop it, find out what's going on well yeah. yeah part of it's stop making it sound like yeah i don't want to come across in your show as uncaring like we have it. yeah i just yeah it, it blows my mind that we just saw these guys and they're gone it happens we see people yeah, all the time it. and they can get hit by a bus ne the next day. This is a different situation, of course, but people die. Right. I had a friend. I had talked to him the day before. The next day, he went on a snowmobile with his son. They both got decapitated by driving into a barbed wire fence. Death happens all the time. Yes, Tom, I get it. That's actually a true story. You knew somebody? Uh, I, he, yeah, he worked on a different type of photocopier. I had talked to him the day before. And oh. him and his son actually drove through a barbed wire fence with a snowmobile and both of them got decapitated. Yeah, I've heard of well, that. Well, at least before. it would be quick. Yay! <laughs> hey, is Frankie hey, back yet? I assumed that you guys were all back. <coughs> oh. 